What a great song. Amen. One of these days, it's all going to be over down here, and then we'll just really start living. I said, we're really just going to start living then. John chapter 15. John 15. I want to start reading at verse 1, and I'll read through verse 7. 1 through 7. See if I can get something turned down up here. Picking up a little background noise here. Where it's coming from. But John 15, 1 through 7. It says, I am the true vine. Jesus is talking. He said, My father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. He says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye, what? Abide in, abide in me. He says in verse 5, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Now notice this. For without me, what? You can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Just want to use this for a thought today. It's not really deep or anything. It just says, abide in in Christ, and He will abide in you. Amen. Abide in Christ, and He will abide in you. God bless you. you may be seated. I mentioned a little bit while ago. How many of y'all know that these old bodies are limited? Yes. Uh, we might try to work 24 hours a day, but at some point, we're going to get tired and collapse. Yeah. How many of y'all that are older realize that you don't do now what you used to do? Amen. I used to do 200 sit-ups and 50 push-ups real easy. I could swim 700 feet without stopping. I might be able to do two setups and zero <laughs> push ups. <laughs> might swim 20 feet. It's impossible for me to do today because I let things get in the way. Like greater obligations, like not taking time to work out. I let fat get in the way. Yes. Food got in the way. Carbs. Too much food got in the way. Not eating right got in the way. Y'all, you hear me? Boy, it's really quiet now. <laughs> uh, well, let me ask you another question. How many of you know that you are limited when it comes to doing miracles and healings? Yes. Amen. Why are we limited? Look at John 15 and 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. There are two things to receive in what you want. Number one, abiding in Christ. And number two, His word must abide in you. Now it's my understanding that God wants to answer the prayers of His people. Amen? Amen. Especially if it concerns saving people. 
God is all about kingdom growth or church growth, if you will. But it seems our goal is to seek growth and not seek Him. Could I just tell you this? We are limited without God. Amen. Amen. We all want to see miracles, don't we? We all want to see people healed, don't we? But we're limited because we won't abide in Christ. Jesus plainly tells us in John 15 and 1, I am the vine, abide in me, because in verse 4 he says, the branch, us, cannot bear fruit by itself. It has to abide in the vine. If you stay connected to the main vine, look at all these little shoots coming out. They're connected to the vine. Man, they're going to do great things. They're going to bear much fruit, right? But if we don't stay connected, I think I just lost my sign. But if, if we don't stay connected, after a while we're going to look like this. No green stuff on us. Life's going to be dead. It's going to be terrible without staying connected to the vine. All we, want, we all want to see those miracles. We all want to see people healed. But in order to see it, we've got to stay connected to the vine. Would you say amen? Amen. amen. And if we don't, then we're not going to see the things that God wants for us to see. The reason we are limited is because we, are, we pulled away from the vine and started eating other stuff. We started eating stuff that's not good for our relationship. And the fact is, you can eat other stuff for a while and still look good. Yes. I can buy bigger clothes and still look pretty good. But I don't feel too good. There's a whole lot of stuff got in the way. Called fat. And we're talking about that, do we? You can still look like a Christian and act like a Christian, but all the time your power is dwindling and your power is being zapped from your body if you do not have that relationship with God and you're not connected to the vine. Amen. Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. nothing. You know what he's telling us? Everything you want to accomplish is, a, is going to be impossible without me. But if you abide in me and I in you, then things become possible. Amen. Listen to me. Abiding is, in Christ is far more than holding on to Christian beliefs. Amen. There's more to being a Christian than just carrying your Bible. Amen. There's more to being a Christian than just looking like a Christian. There's more to being a Christian than just going to church every time the doors are open. It's more than doing what your pastor said. <coughs> Amen. Amen. You know what? I think David shows us what abiding in Christ means. I want you to look at Psalm 63 and 1. He says, now, now I may read a different version than what you've got. He says, Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Jesus says to his disciples, in case you don't know, Jesus is talking to his disciples and the church in this text, if you'll look above it there. He is telling them, Abide in me. And abide here, y'all, it is a verb. In fact, it's an action verb. Listen, abiding in Jesus is not a feeling or a belief. Amen. It means to remain or to stay. It's far more than just believing on Jesus. It takes work to be connected. We must be connected to Him. We must always be leaning on Him, resting on Him, pouring out our hearts to Him, and using Him as a fountain of life and strength, depending on Him to do the impossible, to do those things that we can't do. Amen. Could I say this? The best that this old carnal flesh human being can do by itself is to just have a form of godliness. Come on. That's the best I can do. 
We can be like the Pharisees and be rule keepers and commandment keepers, but we must be careful that we don't deny the supernatural power that is available to us. That was the problem with the Pharisees. They couldn't get beyond themselves and keeping the law and realize that God was a supernatural God, that Jesus was a supernatural God that could do miracles and healings, and they could do it too if they would just get beyond themselves and get connected to the vine, but they didn't want to get connected to the vine. That's the reason for the two principles or the two keys that Jesus gives here. Some Christians get the Holy Ghost and all they do is become law abiders. Come on. Some Christians get the Holy Ghost and decide they don't have to keep any rules. Come on. But what does Jesus say? He says, abide in me. And if you abide in me and let me abide in you, abiding in him keeps us pure. Right. Right. Woo! If we abide in Him, we don't have any problem living for Him. Mm -hmm. Listen, the only way we can abide in Him is through prayer and having a relationship with Him in daily communication. That's good preaching, brother. Right? Yes, amen. I think Jesus set the example for us, y'all. He sent the multitude away so He could pray. He went up to the mountain to pray by Himself. How many of y'all believe that prayer changes things? Yes. Amen. How many of y'all believe that prayer changes you? Yes. Woo. Lord have mercy. When you've got a bad attitude, you know what we need to do? Because prayer causes humbleness, doesn't it? It empowers us to live a good life. It empowers us to do miracles. It causes Jesus to to abide in us when we pray. Without Jesus, we're just going through the motions. And if that's the case, it will be impossible to cast out devils. It will be impossible to do mighty works. It will be impossible to heal the sick without Jesus. We can't do it. Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 7, 21, when they asked why they couldn't cast out the demon out of the possessed man, Jesus says, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Woo, I hold it. We need to start us a new thing at the church. We're, we're going to fast around the clock. We're going to fast four or five days, you know. Or we're going to start a three day. What happened to the prayer part? Huh? <laughs> We want to start all this other stuff and, and get beyond the one little simple thing that we need to do to stay connected to God. Pray. Amen. We need that prayer because if we abide in Him, then He's going to abide in us. And if He abides in us, then we can do miracles. Come on now, y'all. Amen. The reason we're not seeing the miracles that we ought to see is because we're not staying connected to the vine. Yeah. See, the old man, old man, or praise the Lord, or hallelujah, or something, you know. Amen. And that's the truth. We need to stay connected to Him so we can see the miracles. We are not seeing the miracles and we're not seeing the healings that we need to see because we're not staying connected to the vine. I thank God that we have to go through some experiences sometimes to get us reconnected. That's true. Come on. That's sad to say. The church shouldn't have to get reconnected all the time. We need to get reconnected every day. Amen. We need to stay connected. Not, 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 well, you know, I, I feel so far away from God. We oughtn't to feel so far away from God. It ought to be how we start our day. It ought to be how we finish. Boy, that's good preaching. It ought to be how we finish our day, connected to God. In Mark 1, 29, Jesus and the disciples left the church, or left the synagogue, and, and they went to the house of Simon. And the Bible says that Simon's mother-in-law was sick of a fever, or she had a fever, and Jesus goes over and he just takes her by the hand and lifts her up. And immediately, the fever left her. And she got up and started ministering to those that were there. Jesus never prayed for her. He just touched her. And lifted her up. And she was healed. Now, I, I know we, we, we can say, all right, yeah, but I've got an excuse. Jesus has all power. Jesus is God manifest in flesh. And he could do miracles. He could do all kinds of things. Amen? Mm -hmm. 
Amen. And I say, yes, he can do that. But I also read here, I think it was just last week or a couple of weeks ago, that some of the disciples, just their shadow passed by the sick and they were healed. Come on. Listen, it's not impossible for us to do great miracles. It's not impossible for us to see God heal people if we just stay connected to the vine. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that later that evening in Mark 1.34 that Jesus healed many that were sick of different diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Can I just say that's the reason we let Satan speak? We listen to him because we haven't prayed enough to resist him. That's true. These devils knew Jesus. Does the devil know you? Come on now. Does he know you as a law abider? Or does he know you as a Sabbath keeper? Or does he know you as a supernatural, that you have supernatural power with God? Come on. I remember several years ago, I was watching R.W. Schembach, I believe, and I, I don't even know if I can get this story, but I, I remember watching him. And he said he was at Rod Parsons' camp meeting, I believe, preaching. And he said, I was in my motel room, I believe it was, one, one night after service. And he said, we'd gone out to eat. We'd had a good time talking. He said, I, I come back and I, I, I was trying to chill out. And then he said, I got sleepy and I, I, I turned off the light and I was, I was sleeping. And he said, all of a sudden, my door started rattling and the door opened. And he said, all of a sudden, the, this, I felt this evil spirit, evil presence in my motel room. And he said, I spoke up and I said, who's that? And he said, it, it was just this putrid smell. And it, I could tell that the devil or, or some kind of evil spirit had come into the room. And he said, I, I, I just said, uh, who are you and what, what do you want? And he said, the devil started talking. And he shook my bed and he moved my bed about three or four feet and he began to tell me that he was going to do, he was going to destroy my ministry and he was going to destroy my life. And he said, I sat right straight up in bed and told Satan, you are a liar and that you are doomed that Jesus is greater than you are and I command you to leave in the name of the Lord. And he said, besides that, before you leave, put my bed right back where it was. You know what we need to do sometimes? We need to stand up. We have the power of God in our life if we stay connected to Him. But the problem is, we're not staying connected to God. He said, if you abide in me and I abide in you, then you can ask what you will and it shall be done. Amen. I believe that's the key today. We have got to stay connected to Him so He'll can't stay connected to us. Amen. Yes, amen. Don't, you got to understand this. If we stay connected to God, we don't have to do drugs. If we stay connected to God, you don't have to have an affair. You don't have to tattoo your body all over, beat yourself up, or, or you don't have to. Uh, you don't. You don't. You don't have to drink beer. You don't have to do alcohol and stuff. If Jesus is abiding in you and you are abiding in Him, you can do what Jesus says to do. Amen. Jesus wouldn't even let the devil speak. He just told them to get out and they knew his power. I'm telling you, the devil needs to know the power that we have with God. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all ever had somebody cut you off while you was talking? What are they be talking about that? <laughs> have somebody cut you off. My, my mother was good at that. I can remember after Donna left and I was at home by myself. You know, that's terrible when you have seven kids and I'm the only one left. <laughs> they all run off and left me. I don't blame them. They got out there soon they could. <laughs> but I can remember talking to my mom about my dad. He's got all these rules and he won't let me go. He won't let me date Marsha. He won't let me have the car. I do all this stuff around here. I mow the yard. I take out the garbage and I work and I'm, I work like a dog working on another job and I've still got to wax the car and pump. And she just cut me off and she was like, 
I don't want to hear another word of that. You shut up right now. Well, before I could even get all that started, she just cut me off. You realize that's what we need to do to the devil? When he starts climbing up on our shoulder and whispering in our ear, we just need to stop him in his tracks and say, do you know who you're talking to? Huh. I ain't going to listen to that. You already do. Put him in his place and tell him, hey, I know where you're headed and you ain't about to stop me. I'm connected to the vine. I abide in Jesus. I have a relationship with him and I can command you and you have to flee me. We get enough of God in us to stop the devil in his tracks. Don't even let him speak. You know, he ain't got nothing good to say, no, how? Amen. Here's where I want to go today. Look at Mark 135. And in the morning, raising up a great while before day, Jesus went out and departed into a solitary place and then prayed. Later that morning, Simon and the crowd returned and started looking for Jesus. And they finally find him. And Peter says in verse 37, Lord, all these men seek for thee. They're looking for you. They want more healings. They want more miracles. But Jesus surprises Peter with his response in verse 38. Let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. Why would Jesus want to leave when all the crowds had come back from over? That would have probably been pretty pleasing to us. Our head might have been swelled up when everybody was getting healed and we'd seen the miracles. God help us. Look, the crowds come back. The people want more. But Jesus didn't go. Because his task was not to just heal and do miracles. That's just benefits. Yes, amen. We're staying connected to the vine. And we try to make ministries out of it. Come on. It's all right. It's gifts. It's gifts and callings of God. It's not ministry. The ministry is when and lost. I'm telling you what, they got power. I saw them lay hands on so and so, and they were slain in the spirit immediately. And God filled them with the Holy Ghost, and then marvelous works for them. And God raised them up, God healed them. Right? Did anybody get saved? That's really what it's all about, isn't it? Oh, thank God for the miracles. Don't get me wrong, we need more of them. We need more miracles and more healings in our church. But let's not go after the miracles and the healings, let's go after God. Let's try to get people filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. Sometimes all we can do is talk about standards of the church. How do we get away from what God wants us to do? And that's the win the lost. I'm not against standards. I'm for standards. I think we ought to be holy. But I'm here to tell you there's more to it than standards. There's more to it than just a Pharisee spirit. There's a whole lot to just staying connected to God. And if we stay connected to God, we're going to see the miracles and the healings. But we're going to see people come running to God, repenting of their sins. That's what I'm for. Jesus prayed. And he had his priorities right when they come to him. Hey, look, they, they all come back. Jesus had been praying. See, sometimes we're not, when we're not praying, we can come up with wrong ideas. That's true. When we're not praying, we say, oh, ooh, hey, the crowd's come back. Hallelujah. That's great. Fill up the church. Man, this is fantastic. Everybody's coming back. I hope they do come back. Y'all don't get me wrong. I'd like to see the church packed. But we can't get sidetracked to thinking about the crowd and forget about the people's souls. That's the main thing, y'all. Jesus has been praying. We got to keep praying. We got to stay connected to the mind so that our mind stays clear and we're following what God wants us to do. Because if we don't stay connected, pretty soon we're going to die. We can, we can seek after the miracles. We can seek after the signs and the wonders and dry up. But I'm telling you, if you stay connected to the mind, you're going to have the right ideas. Your God's going to direct your path. He's going to do great things for you if we just stay connected to Him. If 
Jesus, the man, or the flesh, I should say, needed direction. How much more do we need direction? Did y'all get your directions this morning? Did y'all follow the map today? And I've been there so many times, I know exactly how to go. Huh? Yeah. Well, I've gone to work every day for I don't know how many years. I know exactly how to get there. Come on now. But if you talk to the Lord, there might be a different avenue He wants you to take. I know you normally go down that road, but I want you to go down because there's a man standing right down there on the side of the road. Right. Philip's having this great revival. Whoo, Lord, fantastic revival. Soul's getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Great time. With and God speaks to him and says, There's a man out there in the desert I want you to go see. He's all by himself. Leave this and go to that. See? But if you're praying and you're connected to God, God says, Go. You know what you do? You go. Yeah, but I've got my plan all laid out. I've been doing it this way for years. Everybody knows this is why I stop by. You know, I leave here, and I leave the house, and I stop by Hardy's and get me a sausage biscuit, and then I then I go to this, and I, I do that, and then I, I just ease on down to work. You know, no. Maybe today he wants you to go to McDonald's, huh? See, if you talk to God, He might see you in a little bit different way to speak to somebody that He's got. Philip comes up on this guy sitting in this chair and reading Isaiah. And he walks up to me and says, Understand of thou what thou readest. I do that sometimes. I say that. Understand what you understand what you're reading. I've got to get this thing off, y'all. Somebody be sitting and reading in church, and I'll, I'll ask them that. Understand what you read? Well, how can I unless there be somebody to give me some direction? It just so happens that if you're connected to the vine, I got good news for you. You're connected to the one that knows where to send you. Oh, they're saying, children, go where I send thee. Oh, that's a great song, isn't it? Oh, the words are good. The, the tune, I like the tune. Well, what we need to do is understand that God wants to send us some places sometimes where it may not look like anything's going to happen. But God is the one that's already got the answer, and you're the answer for somebody's need. You are the answer for somebody that's seeking God. God has sent you. And for long, feel it. Philip begins to minister to him, and they come up on a body of water. And Philip said, Here is water. What does hinder you to be baptized? And he takes him down there and baptizes him. And then the next thing you know, the guy's getting in the chair and all by himself, Where's Philip? God done translated him somewhere else. Wow. Listen, if Jesus had to pray and he needed direction for his life, how much more do we need direction? Jesus said, my ministry is to seek and to save that which was lost. Wow. Don't we often forget what we're here for? We're not careful we'll ask God for a healing ministry. I mean, with all the sickness and disease and cancer, you could surely say God would be pleased if we had a healing ministry. Think about all the media attention we'd get at the church, if we could get a lot of people healed and get the media to turn out, we'd get a lot of free advertising for the Lord. Well, is it for the Lord or is it for you? Huh? Wouldn't it be a whole lot better if we had revival going on and people coming to the Lord and getting forgiveness of their sins? How is it? How is it, y'all, that, that we are supposed to be so connected to the vine and yet we can get sidetracked and forget about the lost? How is it we can get so involved in everything else and forget the main thing, saving sinners? Huh? How, how is that possible? He says, if you stay connected to me, if you abide in me and I abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done. The greatest thing we can do is ask him to save our family. Amen. The greatest thing we can do is say, Lord, save somebody today. Change somebody's life today. Listen, I want miracles. Sister Grace, I want to see miracles. I want to see healings. I want to see people raised up and restored. Sister Frida, I believe it with all my heart God's going to do it. But the main thing is, is we need people born again of water and spirit. 
We could even ask God for a ministry of performing miracles or feeding all the hungry around the world. We could, we could be instrumental in wiping out famine. That would surely make us known worldwide here in our little town. What if we had a teaching ministry like Jesus? Everywhere he went, he drew a crowd. He was such a good teacher. People wouldn't even take a lunch break. It's really going to get quiet now. Hmm. Pastor, you went just a little bit too long today. No, thank God our people's not like that. They, I mean, they'll stay with you. Amen. People wouldn't even take a lunch break to eat when Jesus talked. Lunchtime was an unnecessary intrusion. Oh man, if we could have a great church, if only I, if I could just teach like Jesus taught. But you know what? The disciples didn't ask to be able to perform miracles or to have a ministry of healing. They didn't even ask to be able to teach like Jesus. They just made one request. Lord, teach us how to pray. Teach us to pray. They knew that everything would fail if they didn't learn how to pray. Do y'all know that? Do y'all know that everything in our life will fail if we don't pray? If we don't abide in Christ, everything in our life will fail. Yeah, you may, you may have some results for a while. You may look good. That fat of king after a while. Brother Johnny, it's going to catch up. The heart gets weak. Come on. Body starts feeling run down. Your feet starts hurt because you carried all that extra. I, I'm, just, I'm just talking. I don't know how I know all this. Huh? Let me ask you. If you had one request for your ministry or for your church, would it honestly be, Lord, teach me to pray? Huh? But the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. God's plan is to grow the church. But I will assure you, it won't be because we've added another parking lot or a gymnasium or a walking track or built another building. It will be because we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. All this other stuff is just added stuff. Once we pray. Listen, God has been good to us here at this church. He has blessed us. But all that we have has been made possible because we pray. Amen. God got us this far. Let's not quit praying. Amen. I found in the book of Luke that Jesus told his disciples in chapter 24, verse 49. Behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be in due with power from on high. He's saying here, no ministry is going to start until they are endued with or clothed with power. Acts 1 and 8, it was continuation of this, but he, but he said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. People didn't come or power didn't come until they prayed. They prayed seven days and God changed them. Woo. Okay. Here it is. We got it, right? Seven days. That's a week. Let's start a prayer revival. Woo! Hallelujah. Yeah, let's start. If God says it, okay. If God says it. But don't just do it because you see it in the Word. They prayed seven days. Do it because God instructs you to do it. And then let's, let's not start a religion out of it. Well, bless God if you don't fast or you don't preach, you, you, don't, you don't pray seven days, you ain't nothing. We can start our own religion, a new religion called the Seven Day Prayer Warriors. You know, we can, we can start something like that. But what we need to understand is if we stay connected to God, that's what God was telling them. You get connected to me. You abide in me. If you abide in me, I want to abide in you. Then we can turn the world upside down. You can ask what you will, and it's going to happen. 
We've been praying for our families. What we need to do is just get really connected to the vine. See, sometimes we say we're connected, but we're not connected. Yeah. See, if you're really connected to the vine, you want to spend time with God. Yeah. Amen. You don't want to be around everything that has to do with church. You want to keep your mind focused on God. You want to pray. You want to, you want to be around people that love God. If prayer could change the attitude and the altitude of those in the upper room, what could it do for us? Prayer changes things. Amen? Amen. Jesus, I'll close. Let's stand. Jesus said to his disciples one time in Luke 18, 25, it's easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 26, and they that heard it said, who then can be saved? And Jesus said, these things which are impossible with man are possible with God. There's a whole lot of things, y'all, that are not possible for us to do because we are not connected. But if we get connected to God, all things are possible. If we abide in Him and He abides in us, we can ask what we will and it shall be done. I want to see greater things. I'm hungry to see greater things. I'm hungry to see a church thriving, using the gifts of the Spirit in the church. I'm hungry to see a group of people come together that's concerned about every soul. Yeah, we can fast, but the greatest thing we can do every day is pray. Frank, we pray, we pray way too little. So, well, I don't know that it has to be a great amount of time. Y'all, I'm not sure we don't need to spend a whole lot of time praying so that we can get us under subjection. If we're going to abide in Christ and He's going to abide in us, and I believe there are things that are coming against us that we need to pray every day. God, give us power to overcome it. Lord, give us power to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Not so that we can build up ourselves, but so the church would be built up. The glory of God would be built up and people would trust God more than they've ever trusted Him before. We've got to get back to those times. The early church didn't have anything on us. We've got the same power. We've got the same Holy Ghost. We serve the same God. God, we, we heard about it. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Brother Keith ministered to us just a couple of weeks ago. God does not change. He has not changed. He still wants to do great things. But we've got to stay connected. Because if we don't stay connected, we might look good for a while, but pretty soon the leaves start turning brown. I ain't all ever bought a real Christmas tree. Man, you can take it out of the house after it's been up 30, 45 days. Still looks pretty good. Now the leaves might be shaking off of it. it still looks green. I've taken them out of my house. Throw them over there in the woods at the edge of the house. Brother Terry, they stay green for a long time. But one day you go look. Turn it brown. Next thing you know, all the needles is off of it. <coughs> Man, it's bare looking. Don't you think sometimes that's our life without God? Lord, I thought I could make it. I thought I could make it without the Holy Ghost. I thought I could make it without the strength that you give day in and day out. Y'all, we need a renewing of the Holy Ghost every now and then. That was weak. I said, we need the Holy Ghost every now and then. Why do you put water in that tree? 
You want to keep it fresh? Why do we need the Holy Ghost in our lives to keep us fresh so that we can be used in the gifts, so that we can abide in Jesus and He abides in us? Could we come? Could everybody just come up?